three, two, one. Mm -hmm. All right, we're talking 1982 Penn football. Team goes nine and two, eight and one overall. The lone regular season loss was an overtime loss to Elkhart Central, 12 to nine. Finished the season with a loss at our Nelson Snyder High School in Fort Wayne, 20 to seven. Could that have been the Rod Woodson or the group? group? Rod Woodson, yeah. All right, well, we'll come back and talk about that one. But uh, let's go back and let's talk about your approach going into 1982, already knowing that that really talented sophomore class had a year underneath their uh, belt, if you will. And let's talk about that group as well as the senior class of 1982. Well, it was, uh, again, a really good group. And uh, that was we were uh, lucky to get into the playoffs with uh, with a loss there, and uh, we lost Elkhart Central and Mishawaka beat Elkhart, and the way they figured it all out, we got the, we got to go, and uh, very very happy to do so. But it was uh, uh, the one thing that you talk to people today. First of all, they do not. Remember, even the players playing at Penn do not remember how good South Bend football used to be. I'm talking 30 years ago now, which seems like a drop in the bucket to me, but most people gasped 30 years. <laughs> yeah, it was 30 years ago, but I, I remember if there wasn't at least three South Bend teams ranked preseason top 10 in the state, there was something, something was wrong. And, uh, and it was the same with... Uh, and this was uh, when Elkhart Central were in their glory years. I mean, they were good in their uh, uh, in the 80s, late 70s and 80s. They were good. Mishawaka, of course, was good. And uh, and and surprisingly enough, today, I mean, the South Bend were awful good. You saw we had some losses to some South Bend schools in there. And I'll never forget in uh, 1978, and I mentioned this before, we were undefeated and played Adams late in the year, and I don't think they'd won a game. We beat them 14 to seven. I'm very, very happy to do so. We didn't say what's wrong, how come, <laughs> no. It was, they were good, and they'd, they'd played everybody pretty tough like that. So the, the league used to be, when I first we first got in it, we were beating him twenty to seven, seventeen to ten, things like that, and it's just it, it just got out of hand when they had that uh, where they lost all those teachers and uh, and uh, the coaches weren't protected, they were gone, and uh, just it's kind of they've been on a downbound spiral since. Now this is going into year number eleven. Is that right? No. Yeah. Yeah. This is. Yeah. This is. This is this year number eleven or year number ten for you. Eleven. Okay. Year eleven. So, what are you doing different from year one to now year eleven? Where have you matured as a coach? Well, I mean, the big change is. Uh, in year eleven, we didn't have to worry about numbers. My first year, I mean getting numbers out. We weren't even thinking talent. We just wanted to get bodies out there and then we wanted to two platoon. We wanted to play a lot of kids just to get the numbers up. And uh, the coaches and everything, uh, I remember when I wanted to start out with two platoon, they, you know, I, I had even players tell me we couldn't do it. They said, we don't, how can you, we only got five good players, how can you get 22? <laughs> and, uh, but uh, now the coaches, the players, everybody believes in the in the two platoon system. So uh, we're it, we've we've got our system in. We know what we want to do offensively and defensively. We've been grooming kids for these positions all the way up, and uh, and now we've got a very very uh, talented senior class that has uh, contributed all the way up. A number of them started for two years, few of them started for three years. Uh, Quigley came in, played some quarterback as a sophomore, and, and what Kowski mentioned was second team all league as a sophomore. So uh, we had we had pretty good uh, 
pretty good group going, and as a matter of fact, I believe we were starting 21 seniors that year. Claude Donati was uh, the only one that was a uh, junior. Every, every, everybody else was seniors. I, once again, just off the top of my noggin, you've got 10 guys on this 1982 roster that went into coaching. And you probably, there may be some other guys who I don't know. Uh, Dave Janicki was on this, this staff. John Hedrick was a guy that was on this. Todd Yeoman was on this group. That, and then we already talked about Man Speaker, Barrier Dilly. Uh, and you mentioned Claude Donati was a big part of your, the middle school program is in weightlifting and then Phil Jensen. Yeah. Coach, you're turning out coaches. Yeah, well Raul is the middle school coach. Okay. Claude, uh, he went to Illinois State and uh, he now is in the RV business in Elkhart. Claude, okay. was, uh, his brother was the uh, is the coach there. But, uh, but you're turning out coaches. You didn't even know what you were doing right now. <laughs> no, but I'm going to tell you, it was uh, when I was in high school, I knew what I wanted to do. I was having so much fun playing football. I knew this is what I wanted to do with my Can life. you imagine having n nine or ten boys from one team go into your, follow you into your profession? No, I mean. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. Uh, but every year. I would have South Bend coaches call me and said, "Is there any Penn kids around town that aren't that could be? I'd like to hire part-time coaches, volunteer coaches. They wanted Penn kids because they understood the game, and uh, these guys understood the game, and uh, that's why I think they're all good coaches." All right. What when you look back on the, the, the to finish the 1982 season, you had a chance to compete against what I've said in my career is the greatest high school football player I ever saw play the game, and that's the legendary Rod Woodson, member of the National Football Hall of Fame, top 75 player in the history of National Football. He was faster than fast can be, Olympic-type speed. What do you recall of having to try to scheme against that guy? Well, <laughs> uh, yeah. It's a it's a team thing. I mean, you first of all you got to adjust your pursuit angles when you're playing somebody like Rod Woodson. It's not normal. You can't go five five five. You're gonna have to go seven seven seven, and make sure if you're playing cut back, you're playing cut back. If you're playing uh, reverse, make sure you're playing it. I mean. He was obviously very, very good, made the uh, all-pro 50-year team, and uh, so uh, he had success through not only Snyder, but Purdue and uh, the Steelers and the NFL. And uh, it was just, matter of fact, they had a Herbie Jackson that played at, at uh, uh, Ball State, and they had uh, mm -hmm. Uh, Brock Rohrbacher was yep. just, uh, you know, was beast. very physical, and uh, that that was a uh, that was a very very uh, good team that we that we played. I actually think Rohrbacher and those guys played on the '86 team. I don't, I can't, I'm, I'm, I don't know, but I know it, uh, uh, they were they owe us back at that time had talent, and the thing was, we scored first. And uh, it was uh, it was like thirteen to seven going up the last play of the game, and we took a desperation throw and they intercepted and ran all back. So the final score I believe was like twenty to seven. Mm -hmm. And uh, but it, they scored on the very last play. We had the ball and just we had to take a chance and try for Hill Mary and and they. Uh, you know, when they intercepted, they they saw they had clear field. There, instead of just taking a knee, they ran it all the way back. So uh, it was. Uh, so we were actually in the game with them pretty good. But uh, that was uh, that was uh, that was, I believe, our first introduction to Snyder, and it was rude. <laughs> okay, let's move along. 